So here's a quick one. Lately I've been thinking that my videos are a bit long, so I wanted to do something I could explain under 10 minutes. This is not a fully fledged effect, but hopefully you'll find it useful and can develop it further. The idea is to trigger something at different times or at different events. Like in this case, the animation plays every time there is a drum kick. As always, we will rebuild the network from scratch and I'll explain along the way. We start with an audio file in and an audio device out, which we can bypass for now. Then from the palette, we take audio analysis. Then we need a select chop and we're interested in kick detection. Then we can drop a null and proceed to draw a ring with a circle top. We can already connect an out top and toggle the display flag. The resolution is low, so let's change that to 1080 by 1080. And we don't want a field circle, so alpha 0, border color white, and border width 0 0.05. Next we want to set the radius according to our chop and it's a bit too big so we need to multiply both x and y by 0, 0.4. We can see it's too flashy so let's switch that off before anyone gets a seizure and visualize the data with a trail chop. There are too many kicks being detected even with a higher kick threshold. You can try adjusting the settings, but we are going to do something else here. First let's swap the audio file and use something with a very distinct kick. We can see that every kick is being detected twice. I'm sure there are several ways of fixing it, but we are going to do it by inserting a trigger chop. And then under the sustain tab, let's set everything to zero. Now it feels like the animation is a lot more in sync with the track. But what if I wanted the ring to scale up slowly? I could change the attack length to let's say 2 seconds. But then we'd end up skipping a few kicks. What we can do is to use another trigger. So one to detect the kicks and another one to drive a slower animation. Let's point the circle radius to null 2. And that's good, but we're only visualizing one kick. We obviously need more circles. So what we can do is to make a copy of this group here and make sure to point the new circle to null 3. And then we can composite them together using over. And they'll be drawn on top of each other because they're getting triggered at the same time. So what we need to do is to count the beats and alternate between the targets. We can store the number of targets or number of rings as a constant and then pass that as the limit maximum. We also need to subtract 1 because it starts at 0. We're going to pulse these triggers directly so we don't need any input. And we can keep the channel names as kick detection, so we don't have to change it in our circle tops. We're going to trigger them via the parameter trigger pulse. And for that we need a chop execute that. Point it to null 1 and open it in the text editor. And then clean it up a bit, delete everything except on off to on and then toggle off to on on the parameters and then let's write our expression op trigger 2 
dot par dot trigger pulse dot pulse. So now every time the value of null one changes, it pulses trigger two. And then we want to pulse trigger three next. And that's where we use our count. So let's create a variable called index, which is op count channel zero. This will give us a float, so we need to cast it as integer. And then we create another variable called name, which is trigger plus index converted to a string. We need to add two because our index is zero and one and our triggers are two and three. And then just use that name. But that's not enough to visualize all the kicks. We need more circles. And as you can guess by the title of the video, we're going to use the replicator comp. So first we need to create a base with this group here and we're going to call it ring animation. Then we're going to dive inside and change from out two to out one so we can see the preview. Let's change from trigger two to just trigger. And now we add a replicator and drop ring animation as the master operator. The number of replicants is going to be our num rings. And we want the layout to be vertical. Now we can select both items and connect them to comp. And we need to edit our script. The index now starts at 1. And the name is item index slash trigger and then we can increase the number of rings and make sure to connect all the items to comp and there we have it one circle animation for every kick we can do one final tweak to make it look a bit nicer we can change the border width according to our chop. The higher the value, the thinner the border. So it needs to be 1 minus kick detection times 0 0.05. Back to the replicator, we need to recreate all the operators to see the changes and then connect them all to comp again, which is a bit annoying to have to do every time. But we can automate that with this callback dot. So let's edit that, clean it up a bit, and we only need one line of code, which is C output connectors zero connect to OP comp one. Now every time they get recreated, they connect automatically to comp one. And that's it. This is the snippet. I uh, hope you find it useful. Get in touch in the comment section and see you in the next video.